the trickery, the trickery, the trickery that has gone on with Credit Karma. Now, this is a little bit old, but we're going to be talking about some of these dark patterns. And I'm going to do another video where we specifically look at this meeting that the Federal Trade Commission had to talk about dark patterns, dark patterns. What are dark patterns? Well, it's what car Credit Karma used and the FTC took action against them. There has been an order that has been issued and hopefully you got your claim in in time because I think that deadline was last month. But let's talk about what went on with this so you know what to be on the lookout for. FTC, Federal Trade Commission, takes action to stop Credit Karma from tricking consumers with allegedly false pre-approved credit offers. Now, this was a couple of years ago when this all started. So I want to go to this website, though, and specifically talk about what happened so that you understand what was going on and why this was not a good thing. And there are particular things that the FTC points out. It says nearly one third of some, quote, pre-approved offers resulted in denial denials, company to pay $3 million and halt deceptive claims. And hopefully this will keep other companies from doing the same thing. All right. So here it says the FTC alleges that the company used claims that consumers were pre-approved and had 90% odds to entice them to apply for offers that in many instances they ultimately did not qualify for. So you see that highlighted there. And then of course this $3 million that they're going to have to pay back. But here it says Credit Karma's false claims of pre-approval cost consumers time and subjected them to unnecessary credit checks. The FTC will continue to crack down on digital dark patterns that harm consumers and pollute online commerce. You got to love it when they call it pollution. All right. So let's we all know we all pretty much have an idea of what Credit Karma is. Right. It says here provides tools that allow consumers to monitor credit scores and credit reports. And then, of course, Credit Karma collects all this information. This is the key for them. This is the thing for Credit Karma right here. Credit, allowing Credit Karma to amass 2,500 data points on each consumer, on each consumer, including credit and income information. Credit Karma uses that information to send targeted advertisements and recommendations for financial products like credit cards. So here's what actually happened proposed complaint alleges that from February 2018 to April 2021, Credit Karma falsely told many consumers that they had been pre-approved for credit officers, leading consumers to apply, incur a hard inquiry on their credit reports, and if they were denied, potentially damage their credit scores unnecessarily. And it says here, this is the key part right here, Credit Karma knew, they knew, they knew that its purported pre-approvals conveyed false certainty to consumers based on the results of experiments. So here's where the dark patterns come in, okay? Where they did experiments to determine, hey, let's tweak our language. This is why you need to be a smart consumer. Let me tell you, I have fallen for so many things myself. So don't blame yourself. Don't feel guilty. No shame here. We're trying to elevate our education about this. Based on the results of these experiments, also known as A-B testing, you probably heard it, they try out diff two different thumbnails, two different pictures, two different types of font. Like they run these tests to figure out what people will respond to. And then that's the one that they hone in on. So it says here, based on the results of experiments, also known as A-B testing, showing that consumers were more likely to click on offers saying pre-approved, than those saying they had excellent odds of being approved. When user interfaces are designed, including with the aid of A-B testing, to trick consumers into taking actions in a company's interest that lead, and that lead to harm, consumer harm, and design tricks have been described as dark patterns. So that's what is going on here. This is what dark patterns are. Dark patterns were the focus of a public workshop that TC had last year. All right. So here's what they said. They said they harmed consumers by deceiving them about whether they were approved. And it says Credit Karma was aware that consumers were misled. For example, 
let's let's see what it told its representatives to say. Its own customer service training materials cited, quote, I was declined for a pre-approved credit card offer. How is that possible? As a common issue representatives would encounter. So they're already they're already having the expectation that people are going to be denied and that they're then going to call into customer service and complain about this. Well, if they're pre-approved, I'm with the people who are being denied. How am I both pre-approved and denied? Yes, exactly. It says also costing consumers time and harming their credit scores. When consumers applied for these offers, third party financial companies made a hard inquiry on their reports which in many instances lowered consumers credit scores and harmed their ability to secure other financial products in the future so that was what was going on with this case and so that's what you need to know sometimes when you're receiving these advertisements these things have been tested they've been tested tested to sort of narrow in on the target words the target pictures the colors the schemes all of it because they know what's going to appeal to you by looking for these dark patterns. We just normally call it what? Advertising research, marketing research, but with algorithms and the use of machine learning, it all takes on a very different perspective and it can have a very different outcome when it's used like this. It wasn't used in a good way. It wasn't used to just say, oh, let's really drill down on our consumer here. No, it was used so that they could pick a misleading word and then use that misleading word on the unsuspecting public. So that's why it's a dark. It says here the proposed order, and of course this is all going through now, but they had to stop deceiving consumers. So now, you know, when you look at those pre-approvals that come in the mail, you'll look at them probably with a question mark and, you know, with some understanding that, hey, maybe I might not jump on this because this might not really be a pre-approval. Let me open it up and actually read the fine print. And I may do a video on that because I get a lot of stuff from companies because I have clients that, yeah, their stuff comes to me. Pay $3 million in consumer redress. And it says preserve records to help prevent further use of deceptive dark patterns. The order requires Credit Karma to preserve records of any market, behavioral or psychological research or user customer or usability data, including any AB or multivariate testing, copy testing, surveys for focus groups, interviews, click stream analysis, I or mouse tracking studies. Wow, that was unexpected. Heat maps or session replays or recordings. I haven't heard about heat maps in a while, but now you see what the issue is. The more you know and understand how this data and information can be used to do things that they shouldn't be <laughs> used for, and you understand what dark patterns are, then you know your your awareness about this increases. So now you know what was going on with this whole credit karma situation and why last month they wrapped up receiving their claims from consumers for this three million dollar payout that they had to pay based on their use of dark patterns and mm, telling people that they were pre-approved when they knew that they were not. So go ahead, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button if this increases your information in terms of a consumer and mm, peace.